Hello guys, my name is Armin. In today's episode AutoCAD tutorial, we're going to take a look at blocks. Uh, we want to review together how we can create the blocks, how we can edit them, what all the attributes that we can give to any blog, what's the difference between convert to block, retain, or delete, and also we're going to tell you the difference between write blocks and the actual blocks in your drawing. So it's a lot to get to. Without further ado, let's jump into AutoCAD to review the process. So the first one, location, you can find it under ribbon. It says block. You'll be able to kind of see it. That's an insertion point, insert block, create. You can also go to the tab, insert. You have the same panels over there you can access for the create a block, define, and edit. And also you can type in the type command. It's B and block pops up. So you'll be able to basically use in three location to get access to blocks. So let me just go back, create two shapes, just a simple one. I have two different polyline that have two rectangulars. So what I do is when I click on it, you can see there's all attribute to different shape. Um, it's a two single objects different with their attributes and a different grip location. So what block does basically turning all of these into one. So I'm going to go to the block definition type a name let's put it sh1 you can pick a point this is a base so it turns all of those grip location to only one grip location on your model so i'm gonna select here and you guys can see how it's gonna look like so the x and y you can put it manual is gonna be over there the block units you can get and the object so you have retain which is gonna basically group him but doesn't change the original source stay as a polyline convert to block takes away all the attributes turn them to one and then delete is going to take away from the project from the drawing annotative is basically adjust the display uniformly at the same size or scale and if you want to have the scale change uniformly you can select that one and also allow exploding so if you unchecked all of this it basically is not going to let you explode it's not going to change the uniformly scale and it's going to be non-annotative so i'm going to select both of these um and then right now it's two objects selected i know it's both of them i'm not going to check any of the other boxes on a behavior panel and then hit okay so this is going to be our shape if you look at it that's going to be added to my library and if i click on it all of those attributes are gone turning the both of them into one shape and the base point is going to be my grip point so you guys can see basically changing everything since i didn't uh, do the uh, explode. I'm not able to explode it. That's going to stay the same thing. So I recommend to always check that box. Also, if you want to edit, you can have edit a block editor and also edit block in place. So let's just check the block editor for now. It's going to open up another window. So you'll be able, this is kind of the gray area. It's where the the basically the blog editor is and if you right click on it again you can edit in place um, if you have multiple one you can select the one that you want to change so what I'm gonna do I want to start with something so let's just copy um, like a three version of the block that we created and right now we're making a change to one of them and you guys see that change is going to be applied to the other so it's going to work as a creating a component in SketchUp so I'm going to add one circle to this one in the editor or you can do it in place we'll try both if I close and save this change you guys can see that change is going to apply to all the blocks that you created and then also it's going to update the block in your library so any change that you make to your created block it's going to be updated over there so right now let's just do um a edit in place so you guys can see you can see it takes away all the other ones that's going to be the only main one you'll be working on let me add another circle right here um and then if, when i'm done you gotta go to that corner save changes and then right now when it's done you can see it's going to apply everything and update my library to the latest and greatest so you have two ways by which you can um, edit your uh, the blocks so let me right now so we use the create block let's we'll just use a retain right now see how this is going to look like so we saw that create block takes away all the attributes of the model we create it right now. I'm going to select this point as a base. Click on the retain and then allow exploding. 
hit OK. Uh, so first, let's just select the objects. We have, we basically just select both of them. Is it sh should show two objects available. Yes, I know I'm good. Uh, and then we have to basically just name it. Uh, right here, I'll just name SH2 for now. And then hit OK. So this one is created. So when you see I click on them, they still have their original attributes. They're still polyline, but they're in a group together. And you can see it's been added. I can use the same uh, basically work, but the good thing is right here, it doesn't take away any of the previous attributes that the polyline has. And if I click both of them and right click, you guys can see here, I do not have those edit and then edit in place. So basically, we need to uh, go to the editor on top and select these items to work with, right? So I need to edit over here. Right now, I'm going to select the shape 2, which is this one, and it's going to take me to the editor. And then when I'm over here, then I can basically edit the retained one. And also, you'll be able to see the changes that it's applied um, to this one. So I'm going to save this change and you can see the other one that I copied have been adjusted. And then it's basically it's going to adjust whatever I had in my library. So it's going to be the same concept. It's basically the good thing is not taking away, but as soon as you turn it into the editor and make all the changes is take away the retain. Just keep that in mind. So if you make changes to the retain one, turn it into a block, takes away all the attributes. That's a very important note. So let's just try the basically um, the the third option I want to go to delete and then let's just allow exploding and also let's turn on the scale uniformly and then I just kind of uh, select the base point on top and I want to select both of them so you guys can see the difference over here so two objects selected let's call them shape three and then okay so you can see it's kind of deleted from the drawings but you have it in your library so you can kind of click on it bring it back it has the same attributes as the block um so you can copy make change to one change all the other ones and right now because this is a block you can get uh in place change and uh edit in place but the retain one you do not have that when you have a retain blocks you will not able to basically get access to the block editor and go and make changes so you need to hit the edit and select the shape too which is the one with retain attribute to it so i'm going to make a change to this one it's going to be the same concept sh3 and then you'll be able to kind of see that's been updated as a block and kind of move around. But you can see the difference right here, what's going on with the retain versus convert to blocks versus delete. So you guys can see the same thing. So the last one I want to show you the recent. So when you click on it, that's going to be the least uh, list of all the items that you have with all the attributes that you created, all the options that we select the box. So don't worry if you miss something over there, you'll be able to adjust here. But make sure you check the box for uniformly and allow exploding and you can check and uncheck it over here if you want but if you uncheck the box when you create originally you won't be able to adjust and right here if you want to scale the whole thing um on x y and z you basically select the scale and then if you want to do the whole project you see the uniform scale so this is going to be really really important for you if you want to do only on x but not on y and z you just make sure you do the uniform but if you want to do it in different direction you select uh, uh just uh uncheck the box for uniform scale so the first one we want to right now when we're creating those we might need to rename so you can see we have all of these shapes that we created and right now if i want to rename i just type rename um and then you'll be able to kind of uh pop up rename box i can select the blocks all the items I already created is in there so i can select one by one change it to a, a new name that i want and you want to make sure after you're done you hit the rename too so i do the first one hit the rename you can see on top name change i'm gonna do the second one let's just make these 2.2 
So the main thing is after you're typing the rename under the name objects, you got to make sure you select the blocks and all the blocks created in your drawings will be appear in this box for you to basically adjust. And when I hit OK, if I go back to my library or my list, you'll be able to see that all of those name have been updated to the latest name that I changed. So this is a kind of a way to rename it. Um, and right now I want to show you how to use the right blocks so you can see i have different shapes over here different objects they're all separate so if i want to create a group per each of these objects and create a dwg file to be shared with others i can use the right block i can type w or i can basically go to create blocks if i want to turn all of these blocks that i created and i have it in my drawings into a separate dwg i can use that one but let's just start with objects so i can select the base same thing over here i want to convert them to block same process that we went through the only difference is here you are creating a dwg file like a separate file so the other blocks that i was creating you can see right here is basically dwg so it's creating a separate file the other um, blocks that we created was just the blocks in our library in our drawing so if you delete the drawings all of those blocks is going to be deleted but if you want to save them and share with others it's better to create a right blocks it is the same process that you're going through you're basically selecting all of them creating the base you want to select the convert to block or you want to retain and then also uh, the, the unit and everything that you want. And when you hit OK, basically it's going to go and create a one. So I already created one with the new block. So let me just uh, specify a different name because that's going to be a separate one. So let me just put one next to this one. This is going to be my other DWG file. And then all in inches. And all created. So you can see I have two different blocks which is two different DWGs. So if I go back to my library and list, you can see they've been added to mine, but the difference is those two are DWG files or not blocks, like they're blocks, but on a D separate DWG file that can be sent with others. So if I hit my recent block, you can see the shape is different. And that's because those two showing me that those are all DWGs separate created and the other shapes are just blocks in my drawing and then again if when you create all of those if i click on them you can see i have all the options below to change and also if you have the same name you want to click on it it basically asking you to redefine it so if you have the same naming with this in your model already you can redefine the block um you can just basically change it give you option to rename it or redefine it basically replacing this one with whatever you have already in your model and change them um, so it's basically up to you if you anytime you bring a dwg in terms of the block to your model this is a process that you need to go through but the most important thing that i want you to be aware for creating right blocks is you have a DWG file and it's going to be a separate file that you'll be able to use. Also, when you open up on your recent blocks, you'll be able to see the options that you can turn them on and off in terms of exploding it, changing the scale and all of those. And right here, I'm kind of bringing all of those blocks that I have in my list and kind of adding them to my drawings and then if i want to change the name i only tab rename to change all of them and if i want to adjust all the options you can see right here in the bottom so i can check all of those boxes uh, to make sure that i can explode or scale or whatnot thank you guys for watching today's episode if you like the content please subscribe and leave a like and i'll see you in the next video